The Boston Celtics have gotten production from many of their young guards, especially the breakout rise from rookie Peyton Pritchard. Which is exactly why there's a logjam issue that the Celtics are currently facing with their guard position. Already at this current moment, players such as Ricky Aaron Neesmith aren't getting too many minutes in the beginning of the season in the first place. But the one player that especially doesn't seem to have a future with the Celtics is Carson Edwards. As a result, let's break down the reasons why the Celtics shouldn't be hesitant in trading him and who the Celtics should be trying to get in return. Now, I know a lot of Celtic fans can be very passionate about how good Edwards can be scoring the ball off the bench whenever he's given a chance. But one of the biggest reasons why the Celtics should look for a trade partner is that they should try and improve their weaknesses on this current team, considering the strengths that they already have. As hinted in the beginning of the video, when your roster in the guard position consists of players such as an all-star in Kemba Walker, who can create his own shot and create for others at an elite level when healthy, a quality veteran backup in Jeff Teague, who is more than capable of being able to run the offense and even take over a game if needed, and then even Peyton Pritchard, who has shown to be a massive punch off the bench whenever the team needs it. Do you really need Carson Edwards on this roster? Especially when you consider that the Celtics already have a similar type of player in Trayvon Waters, who's currently on a two-way contract. The only thing that Edwards would be doing here is that he would be taking up another roster spot and cap space. I don't mean to be harsh, but because of the depth and talent that the Celtics have in this position, what the Celtics need to do with Edwards is that they need to try and find somebody who can either score the ball off the bench or being able to shoot the ball well. And here's why. The Celtics made sure to address the inconsistent 3 point shooting from last year, and that should be a proud acknowledgement for the front office considering how the Boston Celtics are only 0.3 percentage points away from being a top 7 three-point shooting team in the league. But one of the biggest problems that the Celtics had from last season that doesn't seem to be fixed so far in the early season is bench scoring. And one of the ways that the Celtics can solve this scoring production comes through them trying to make a trade with the Charlotte Hornets from Malik Monk. Before anybody says, but KZN, he's another guard. I know this and I completely understand that. The only reason why I'm suggesting Monk in the first place is that Monk offers the Celtics their best chance at being able to solve their bench production for what is likely going to be a very low price. Malik for his career has been inconsistent and he has also had some off the court issues, but this previous season he showed some major improvement to his game. Ironically, Monk started last year poorly, but as shown through the graphic, he had a really strong month of November providing a nice punch off the bench. And Monk followed up this strong play with a very impressive stretch in January, where he was averaging a cool 17 points on efficient shooting and was just really aggressive in terms of both driving in and being able to make shots from the perimeter. And considering how Monk has already stated that he's extremely frustrated with the lack of playing time that he's gotten so far with the Hornets, it might make the most sense to try and get him to set him up as a nice scoring piece for the Celtics bench whenever the playoffs come around. The Hornets very likely won't be a playoff team, so they could become sellers as the trade deadline occurs. If the Celtics attach maybe a heavily protected first or a second rounder, it may just do the job with Edwards in order to get Monk. But let's just say that the Celtics don't want to go for him, because maybe they don't want to take a risk on Monk, or they just don't want to have another guard on the roster. And I can completely understand that. If that's the case, the only other player that the Celtics should realistically go for that wouldn't cost them that much would have to be Wayne Ellington. With Ellington, you aren't going to be getting anything special with him. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Ellington, if the Celtics were to trade for him, is going to be a 15 to 20 minute type of player who will either stand still waiting for open 3 or running off screens to try and get the open shot. And I mean, why shouldn't the Celtics do a trade like this? It never hurts to have as many shooters as possible on your roster because you may never know when one of your shooters gets cold at the wrong time. As for the Pistons, it's a similar situation to what the Hornets are in. The Pistons likely won't be making the playoffs, and since they're going to be sellers, potentially getting a young guard who hasn't been really given a chance in the NBA yet may just do it in any trade. 
Let me know what you guys think. Until next time, peace.